Hi, I'm Sue from Our Journey in Miles. And in this video, Mark and I want to show you how we do our trip planning. And the main ingredient for us anyways is RV Life Trip Wizard. We love that planner. It's we find the easiest and the more complete planner that we've come across. So the RV Trip Wizard is actually part of the RV Life bundle, which includes the RV GPS app, campground reviews, and RV maintenance, and a lot more. We feel that this is a must have for RVers when they're planning. And if you don't already have it and are interested, we're gonna put a link down below in the description where you can get 25% off. And that, that actually will be the biggest discount you'll find on the internet. So when you're going through the checkout process, just put in the code OGIM25. That's our journey in miles, OGIM, 25 and we appreciate your support so stick with us we're going to show you how we use trip wizard plus a lot more so mark and i have been full-time rving since 2017 and uh, that first year we tried a lot of different planners we're new to this never did anything like this this is actually our first rv we ever owned so we kind of tried a lot of things but when we came across rv trip wizard that was a game changer for us and we're still using it so back in 2020 i believe it was 2020 um they rebranded it so it's now part of rv life and it's now called rv life trip wizard so once you've signed up, just go ahead and log in. And we'll take you around a little bit on uh, where to start. The best place to start is go over to your profile area and you're gonna see the default settings menu there. And in here, you're gonna have a lot of information you definitely wanna fill out before you go because it's going to um, customize this whole trip to your RV, no matter what size and what weight it is. So in the general area, we've got an auto load my last trip, which is really kind of a cool feature if you're doing working with just one trip. So every time you open it, it's gonna just go to the trip you, you've last worked with. Um, we don't use that one because right now, We've got the trip we're on, but Mark is also working on a trip for the future. So a tentative one. So we're um, gonna leave that not marked so that we can um, open up whichever trip we want. And then there's a stop for detail here. Usually it's on hover for stop details. And I'm not crazy about that because when you go into there, some of these uh, campsites are kind of close and it's like you're constantly flashing, you know, different uh, campgrounds on don't really want that so I like to put this on click for stop details so if I want to see the detail on a particular part all I do is click on it and then make sure you save settings as you go along and this is the important tab the RV info this is where you're going to plug in your height your weight and everything so you can manually plug in all your in RV info, and we did when we first started RV Trip Wizard, but this is kind of cool. And I know it doesn't pertain to everybody. They don't have all the RVs that exist in, uh, in our country, but it's kind of cool because all I had to do is go to Motorhome, and then we have a 2014, and we have a Newmar. It's a Dutch star and it's a 4369 so it just automatically fills in everything for you and you can see the weight here is the maximum weight it's 44600 last time we had ours weighed it was about 41900 so we're underweight that's nice and if you're carrying propane you definitely want to um, click on this one too because there are some tunnels that don't allow you to do that now this part you'll fill in yourself um, put down your fuel type, um, Mark plugged in, we have 140 gallon capacity and reserve is 10 and we get about 6.5 miles per gallon. Now we did click that, we do want a fuel warning when we're planning our trip, just one of them. And to be honest, we don't really pay attention to that too much because we usually uh, at about halfway on our tank, we'll make a stop and uh, fill up. 
some of that is to make sure we're always we always have the fuel but also to make sure mark gets up and walks don't want to sit down too long all right so then we go to saving the default settings and now because this is a demo we're going to create a uh, new trip we're going to start a new trip and we're going to call it example trip and do you know what day you're leaving yes we're going to say we're leaving on let's say september 12th so you can just go with use your location or if you're not at the location where you're planning this you can go ahead and plug this in so we're going to put wisconsin state fair rv park and there we are all right so you can see here we are right here and the map is filled with different campgrounds for us to choose from so a lot of times what we do is we'll have a place where we know we are and a destination which might be months down the way and in this case we're going to say yes we do know where we're going we're going to end up in uh not sure what campground at this time, but we're going to end up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. All right, so we're now in Pigeon Forge. We haven't picked a, a campground yet, but we can lock it in as that's our destination we're going to. And this is something new, to lock in the date So it didn't used to be that. We used to have to like plug it in and then fill in going down and keep counting the days to make sure we got there on the day we wanted to arrive so on this one we want to arrive on october 5th and we're going to stay for about 10 days you can see i just clicked on the the five and then i dragged it over to the 15th now that's locked in that will not be moved no matter what we're doing in, in uh, the other planning. And right here you can see in between leaving Wisconsin State Fair and getting to Pigeon Forge, we've got 23 nights that aren't planned. So that's where we're going to start filling things up. Before we start going into planning out from State Fair to Pigeon Forge, there's a couple other things I want to show you. If we go into the trip tools where the wrench is, and you look at the trip settings. So we already did the general, give it, gave it a name. We already have the dimensions. This is really nice to um, take care of too. We can choose our RV routing rather than standard, unless you're going to use this for a car. But we've got RV routing clicked, and there you can open up um, or turn on things that you want to avoid. Maybe you want to avoid tolls. We want to avoid the ferries, which we probably would know if we were heading that way. And we want to definitely avoid the unpaved roads. Another thing we do as we're um, planning this is you can use the routing engine estimate, which Trip Wizard will figure out for you. We usually use our average driving speed because we are slow. We take our time. So we actually plugged in our average driving time, which is 50 miles per hour. I mean, give and take. Some places are slower, some places are um, much faster, but that would be our average. And it kind of allows for some of our breaks for restroom and just uh, fueling and, and stretching the legs. Okay, let's just jump down here. So we like to do average hours per day, and usually three hours is enough for us. We're not in a hurry. Um, or you can set, set up the distance minimum, you know, give or take, some are faster, some are slower, usually three hours, we're done. So we plug that in. This too is a really nice feature. So now you can go and check out your driving radius. For example, like here in Milwaukee, if you use the classic driving radius, it's simply a circle that has uh, shows you as the crow flies how far this is. And you can set three different rings. You can set them according to what you want. The inner ring might be 50 miles. Then you go up to 150, maybe 250. So you can set up the three rings or just one ring. We usually do just one ring. You can see now the rings give you an idea on how far out you might want to drive. And the cool thing though, now that they have, which they didn't have before, 
is the advanced driving radius. And we call it the doily because it's much more jagged and it shows you for how long it would take as we're programmed in for three hours to get to a certain destination. If you're going through mountains, um, it's going to be very different. Some are windy. doesn't look like you're going far, but you just did your three hours. Or maybe like in Milwaukee, where you've got Lake Michigan there. So it'll show you from Milwaukee, shooting out on the roads, and how far down and around Chicago it'll take you. And then there's the next tab, which is actually with expenses. You can plug in, keep track of what your camping, your meals, uh, miscellaneous, and your fuel is. Um, for us, we don't use that. But if you're into, you know, being real detailed with that, keeping track of it all, this is a nice feature too. All right, so we're back in Wisconsin, and now we're going to start building out our trip. Um, I'm going to go to the map settings up here in the corner, and we'll go to the radius. I've got clicked on it, the advanced radius. So let's see what that looks like in Milwaukee. So you can see it kind of goes in and out according to um, the roads. And this shows about a three hour radius on where we want to go. Well, we know we want to stay within that because we've got some friends that live in Crown Point. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this radius right now which is a nice option as you're planning. So I'll just click this off, turn off the radius, and I've got a cleaner look. So we're gonna stop and visit some friends in Crown Point. And you can see some of the um, places to say, not too many around here. Well, let's go in to the research and set things up for us first so that we make sure we get into campgrounds that we fit. We're a big rig, so we need to be kind of careful. Right up here, you can see the filters. We've got no filters set right now. So we're going to go through this. You can see you've got choices. Maybe you want to go just in commercial and private. Maybe you're looking for state, uh, state parks or even national parks. Some people might be looking in the area out west for some BLM land to, to go on. There's military, Corps of Engineers. There's a lot of choices here. I'm going to keep it just open because I want to be open to it. Let's collapse that. Come down to the uh, park rating and you can see maybe you want to stay at three star, maybe five star. One thing I'll mention that if you do choose five star, you're really going to limit yourself. I like to stay on all. Um, another nice thing is you can look at reviews and you can look at which are reviewed more than others. This is the big one for us that uh, I like to look at when I'm filtering. The main thing is I want to make sure that we have big rig access. Um, some of you might want to make sure you can have your pets there. Um, maybe pull through site. Maybe you want a boondock. There's a lot of different choices as you can see. Bringing kids along. You want kid friendly. So there's a lot of uh, choices. The thing is the more you click on this, you're eliminating a lot of the campgrounds too. So I just really want to just stick with big rig access for now. And then with, with as far as the hookups and connectivity, um, we're full hookup people. So I do want to have that too. But you can see here too, there are a lot of choices. So usually I put at the top the um, like amenities that most people are looking for. But you can see you can really narrow it down. You want a clubhouse, you want a pet area, um, firewood available. So you can really whittle down with the filters what kind of uh, RV park you're looking for. You can also put down what kind of pricing you're looking for. Or under recreation. A lot of times if we're going to stay at a place longer, we like to have a pool if possible. And we like to do a lot of biking too. So we might click on these two for a stay that we're going to be at for quite a while. And then there's the brands and clubs. If you want to narrow it down just to what you're a member of, like we're part of Good Sam, KOA, Passport, and you can see this is all filling up down here with our filter. We're also Elks Club members. And maybe you want to click on a few other things that you, uh, you'd be interested. So I'm going to unclick these. 
And that way I will just make sure I get everybody in there. I'm not eliminating any other kind of campground. But if you want to narrow it down to just certain uh, brands, you can do that too. So now you can see we've got just two filters. Um, I'm making sure I want we have big rig access and full hookup. And if we go to the points of interest, this is really nice too. But first, you might want to collapse your trip menu to see more. So you might want to hit the rest areas so that you can see along your route where you're going to make your stop. Maybe you want to do the fuel stop. I'm going to take that off. Um, maybe overnight parking. Dump station. So they usually put the more popular searches up above. You can see when I hit the overnight, it filled in with Bass Pro Shops, Cracker Barrel, and there's a lot more down here if you're looking for them. So I took off the fuel because we actually have the open road TSD logistics diesel saving card. And it's usually, you know, you can go to Love's, TA, and a bunch of other ones and get a, a discount. Um, we love this card. It makes such a difference on getting some really good discounts. Um, if you're interested and you haven't already um, joined this, We've got a lot of videos on our YouTube channel that you can check out, kind of talking about what it is and how we use it and our savings. We do have a spreadsheet that we keep track of um, the savings at all the different stops. It, it's been anywhere from 30 cents to like $1.20 per gallon savings. So it's pretty cool. We'll also put a link down below if you're interested. Um, Go to the link. You can sign up through us and we appreciate again your support with that. We also have information if you go to our website, ourjourneyandmiles.com, and we have a, a whole section just on the um, diesel saving, open roads, TSD logistics. So usually what I like to do is just hit the TA because that tends to be our favorite um, stop with this d diesel discount card, and we tend to get the biggest discounts with TA. So I'm going to put TA in there as uh, our point of interest. But you can see as you're going down, there are a lot of attractions too that you might want to click in. You want to do a casino or maybe you're looking for a hardware store. So points of interest is always um, kind of fun to look at too and plug them in. Then we've got the hazard and ours only right now is a low clearance. And because we did fill in our height um, at the beginning of setting up, it'll show us where the low bridges are. All right, let's get back to finding a place around Crown Point. So we've actually stayed at this uh, RV park before. Cedar Lake Bible Retreat, an RV park. And this is what's nice about um, looking for all these different parks is that they will have descriptions in them when you click on, well, I set it up so we could click on it when I click on it. So it's nice because you do see, you know, how many stars it got, how many re uh, reviews it's had, how far it is from where we're at in State Fair. Um, pricing, got $2 here. You also see what they all offer here. In the park details, you get even more. So if you need to give them a call, you can call them. And um, they do have a website. Um, RV Life Campgrounds actually has more, in, more information. And you can look at reviews. And you can see it's a very small park. It's only 30 um, sites. Um, one nice thing about working with this part of the Trip Wizard is they do have a satellite map. So we can zoom in and you can see right here, this is the park. And what's nice also is that because we're a big rig, we don't go into state parks or uh, even national parks because we are so big, but we've been in parks too where the trees are just so low. So you can see as we're driving in, I can see the road, so we aren't going to have any uh, trees in our way as we're driving. One thing, too, that's really cool, we're in Google Maps right now. One thing that's really cool is, like, for example, last time we were there, we were in this site. And some of these look pretty small. But with Google Maps, I can click here and then right-click how far back the site goes. And then we can measure the distance. So right here, I just clicked on uh, this up here. You can see it's, um, we can move it around. Is it longer? Is it shorter? Straighten it out. And you can see 
that this site is actually 49 feet. Um, we're about almost 44 feet, so we just fit in. And I would have to say that's correct. So we ended up parking on the side. But this is a pretty cool feature, too, if you really want to double check, being a big rig, if you're truly going to fit in. All right, so we know this is pretty nice. It'll serve our purpose. We're stopping to visit our friends for a few days. So we're going to add it to our trip. And we're going to stay three nights. And right here it says to um, save the stop after the last stop. Well, the last stop is actually Pigeon Forge. So we don't want to do that. We want it to be after the State Fair Park. Nice thing here too is you can leave comments and maybe keep track of like things in the area that you want to do. For us, it's just going to be um, visiting Pat and Jody. And now I'm going to add it to my trip. So you can see we have now added this after the State Fair. It shows you how many miles. We're going to do 142 miles, and it's going to take us about 2 hours and 50 minutes. We're staying three nights, and this cost actually is coming from um, the fuel. We plugged in um, that we're uh, paying average $3.30, but um, it averages in the, the miles that we're doing and the 6.5 mile per gallon that we're getting. So you get an, kind of an idea how much the um, diesel fuel is going to be. All right, now we have 20 more nights that are unplanned. So let's zoom out. Well, we're heading down to Indianapolis, and that's awesome because we want to check that out. We've been there before, but we loved it, enjoyed it, had a lot of fun. So we're going to go back there. And like I said, we can click on the different um, parks and check them out. Got a KOA. We've got a good Sam, and we've got a State Fair campground. Are you getting the theme? We kind of like State Fair campgrounds. We always say that we are not campers, we're tourists. So we like to usually pick our RV parks according to what we want to see. If we can get in, in a nice location where we can just take our minivan and drive around and visit all this, then we're happy, happy campers, so to speak. So we've been at the State Fair Park before, and as you can see, it has all, a lot of amenities, you know, electric, water, sewer. It is big rig friendly, and uh, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, though, so you're on your own for that. And they do allow dogs. So we can go to the detail. Again, there's a phone number. We can hit their website. Um, we can look at their features, you know, 50 amp. That's what we want. Sewer, big rig access. Reviews are always awesome. I don't always go on just um, the website. I like to see what other uh, trip wizard RVers are, are uh, saying about this. So you can see some didn't like it, some did like it. We liked it because it was um, centrally located and uh, easy in and easy out. It's nice here that uh, the people that have been at that uh, campground or RV park um, have a lot of tips and answer a lot of questions. All right, so we know we want to stay here. We're going to go over to the right and we're going to add this to our trip. We did go online and looked at like things to do in Indianapolis too. So, so I think while we're there, we're going to plan on seven days staying. Not going to lock it in right now because I'm just plugging in our stays and some of it might have to be adjusted. For example, if uh, I chose this and they weren't open because they had um, their fair going on and they're locking out people uh, signing up in there, well then I'd have to go and switch to a different campground. So I'm going to keep this not locked so I do have the availability to change it if I need to. And here we're going to add this to right and not the last stop. Remember, that's Pigeon Forge. We're going to add it right after Cedar Lake um, Retreat. And this is where it gets kind of fun when we're doing all our research, keeping everything in order. So the nice thing down here with the comments section is we can add um, things that we want to do. This is what we like to do. We'll just go online and look at things to do in Indianapolis or wherever. And uh, then once we start finding things to keep a uh, track of what we thought we might like to do, I'll put it in the comments. So I've got down here, we'll see the Motor Speedway Museum. They also have a walking tour that looked pretty cool. I, 
Um, a lot of times I, I go to Trail Link and I, I see what kind of bike trails are in the area. So I did that. I went into the Trail Link and I found that this Indiana Cultural Bike Trail looked pretty interesting. So I'm going to plug that in too. There, so now I've got this organized. We'll be there seven days. And things that we think we might want to do. We'll add this to our trip. So now we're down to just 13 nights. You can see it's a 143 mile ride. These are nice and short, not too long. Two uh, hours and 52 minutes. So now let's see where we can go from there. I'm gonna zoom out. And again, I could put on my map radius. And when we do um, our planning for going out west, cause there's a lot of not so much going on in between the stops. So um, we will use the radius a lot when we're planning for out west, but there's so much to see over here. Once we're done in Indianapolis, I think we're gonna hit Louisville. We've been here before, but we didn't stay too long and there's a lot to do. So when we were in the Louisville area, um, actually twice before, we're Elks, uh, Elks Lodge members. And we did stay at an Elks Lodge in Louisville and I'm not seeing it on, uh, on the map right now, not quite sure why. So what I can do is just go ahead and plug it in. And I know that it is a Louisville Elks Lodge number eight. And here it is. So even if it's not on the map and you want, there's a place you want to go, you can come up here and search for it and put it in, whether you have the address or the name of it. So we knew, know that this is the place that's on Klondike Lane. We're going to click right there. And that kind of bothered me that it wasn't on here because when you go to their website, they specifically say they have room for RVs. So I wanted Trip Wizard to know that they do have room. So I went over to the profile and I clicked on help. Up in these tabs, you can contact them, but also you can do the missing park tab. And here's where I, I put in the Louisville Elks Lodge number eight and uh, said that I can't find the park. So they'll get a message. I can leave a note saying I've been here a few times. Um, this Elks Lodge does allow RVs there. That'll tell them they need to look at it and perhaps put it on the map. We want to play around Louisville. Now, because we are um, pretty much dry camping except for the electric, I want to stay there just five days. Okay, again, I'm not going to lock it in because this may change. And I'm going to put this after we are in Indianapolis. And again, here I can plug in um, things that we want to see, like Churchill Downs tour, want to do the Mega Cavern. And there is a really cool museum, the Muhammad Ali Center. Then, of course, we're in Louisville. Let's do the Food and History Walking Tour. These are ideas, not that we're going to use them all, but once I have that all plugged in, again, we're going to save our custom stop. Now we've got eight more nights that are unplanned. Uh, another thing that I'd like to show on the on Trip Wizard that's been helpful for us, because we've been here before at the Elks Lodge, um, we've driven our car this route and weren't too comfortable with it as far as um, low trees and uh, zigging through neighborhoods. So what we can do is turn this drag route on and we can take it and we can make it so that we're actually going out the same way we came in. And you can see once I, I did drag that over here, it shows we've got a waypoint of one. If you're finding, yeah, I don't really want that. There is a trash here, we can delete it. And now it's gone back to where it was, okay? This is a nice feature though drag a route on you can adjust and customize maybe you've got your cousin in the neighborhood that has room for you to park so you can drag your route over to that too so we're done with the elks lodge as you can see our route is going off to the right and these are all the campgrounds sometimes these campgrounds get a little too much so if you go up in the right hand corner you can turn them off and kind of see where are you all right, I'm thinking we might want to go to Nashville. So let's zoom in on Nashville a little bit and we'll turn the campground filter back on. And you can see they're just looking like turquoise um, tents right now. But if we close in, then the icons for the different memberships show up too, the different types of parks. So because we're tourists, we don't necessarily want to go far out. 
unless we want to relax out there. That looks pretty cool. But we want to be closer to town so that we can um, easily get in and out to the different places we want to see. There seems to be a cluster over here. Let's check these out. We've got two uh, Good Sam's. Okay, right here we've got uh, $3 signs. They've got all the uh, hookups that we want. 6.7 on the review. What's nice too is that you can go into this and you can look at pictures that other uh, RVers have posted. So it pretty much looks like it's gravel roads and gravel sites. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay, here we've got another. This is a, a good Sam, Two Rivers Campground. Right away I can see they've got um, nice gravel roads, very wide open. And the sites are gravel also. So that's a little more appealing to me. It's $3 signs. You can look at the amenities. And now we're going to add it to our trip. So it's about three and a half um, hour drive for us, which is uh, right on the cusp of what we uh, think we want to drive. But you know what? I can remember as we came down this route once before, there was a really cool harvest host, probably our, one of our favorite. And this is another thing we do. Um, Trip Wizard will not show you all the places to stay. Um, like with, uh, I needed to find the Elks Lodge that we knew was there. I just went and saw it, plugged it in. You can also go to Harvest Host and uh, log in. If you're not a member of Harvest Host, you want to be with that too. Um, and we'll put a link down below um, where you can sign up through us and get the best di discount you'll get online through Harvest Host and with our link. Um, the beauty of the Harvest Host is it's really just one night stop. But I always call Harvest Host our date night because we might be going to a winery or brewery or a museum and it's just kind of a something special rather than just pulling into a park for one night and then taking off in the morning. So you've got a little event to look forward to. So I knew somewhere around Bowling Green there is a uh, Harvest Host that we absolutely loved. Here I'm on the Harvest Host website. So right around Bowling Green is our favorite um, har Harvest Host. You can see it's a rock and bee farm and mamaw's kitchen bar it actually will fit us so we know we're good 45 plus feet um, stay for one night and you can reserve online so what i do is once i find where i want to go for this harvest host i'll just highlight and copy it and then i'll go back over into trip wizard and i'll paste the place that we want to go and you can see right here mamaw's kitchen rockfield um, kentucky and it took us right to the location. We'll go to more details. And we're going to stay just one night there. And again, I'm not going to lock it in. And I am put it in, in after um, that campground and save. All right. Now, when I go back here and I look at my lineup, I know I wanted Mamaws to go right after the Elks Lodge in Louisville. That's real easy. All you do is click on the left here and you can drag and move things around to your heart's desire. As long as it's not locked in like Pigeon Forge, you can see I can't do anything with them. So you can do some rearranging once you um, get things in line and you feel, man, I want to change the order a little bit. All right, let's take a uh, look at our trip and see how it's looking. I can go right up here and show the entire trip, but Way too many uh, little turquoise teepees. So we're going to get rid of those so we can really get a good look at it. We can see this last ride here is going to be a little bit longer, but that's okay. We had our fun in Nashville, and now we're heading over to Pigeon Forge. But let's say we did want to make one stop in between. So let's zoom into that section. We'll open up our campgrounds again. And let's just start looking at some of these. All right, this one looks pretty good. Spacious skies, it sounds awesome. And we're just gonna maybe do one night there. So let's look at the details. And just from that first photo, looks like it's wide open. We've got gravel roads, you know what? It's a one-nighter. Reviews are looking good. This is really nice too. Tab I didn't point out before. You can check the weather on what it'll be like during the month you're gonna be there, or you can see what's happening today. So let's add this one to our trip too. 
We're going to add just one night and we'll do it after the campground in Nashville. Add that to our trip. But now we've got a sign, not enough space for this trip between Two Rivers Campground and Pigeon Forge. There are only zero night available and this stop is one night long. So we did use up all our extra space here. What I can do is I can go back to one of these and maybe make it um, last. So let's say since we're at the Elks Lodge and it doesn't have full hookup, maybe we want to go back and edit it. So instead of saying I just need one extra night to squeeze that um, new campsite in. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit this to just four nights. And now we'll save that. So you can see now we do have one night unplanned. So I can go back and I can add in our Spacious Sky Campground just for one night. We just made room for it. We're going to do it after the Two Rivers Campground. Adding to trip. So now you can see it all fell in line. Everything is filled. So once again, we'll take a look at our whole trip. It's looking good. Get rid of those extra. And we've got uh, just an hour and 53 minutes to get to this one. Two hours, 25. All these times are, are really comfortable uh, driving days. So if I go into the wrench and then the trip setting, you can see down here the status of this trip is active. I'm going to put it just as tentative and save it. Like this is something we're thinking of doing. And if I go back into open your trip, you can see there it is, our example. But what's really nice with the tentative is that it does give you, you can see we've got some other trips that we're working on. Mark's right now is working on our Alaska trip that we're doing with uh, two other couples. So that's in the tentative trips. But if you look in our active, Holy smokes, not to organize. I've got some way back from 2021. So what I could do is I can archive these. I'll open up that trip and I'll go into the uh, trip tools and the trip setting. And here it looks active. I'm going to archive this one and save it. The beauty of um, archiving these trips are Sometimes we might be in a similar area and we'll, and we'll be like in uh, um, Bozeman, Montana. It's like, yeah, that was a nice campground. What was the name of it? So we can go back in these trips that are archived and actually see everywhere we've been. Or we can share it with others. All right, let's just kind of go through this real quick and talk about some of the things that we've covered just to um, reiterate it. And like I said, we do use other websites. We will do Google searches to find things to do in an area to help us plan where we want to go and how long we want to stay. We also will use Harvest Host um, so that we can find nearest Harvest Host if we just want to do a one day stop. And sometimes some of these Harvest Hosts are pretty close. You could do a one at one uh, spot and then maybe 10 miles down the road, there's another one. So it's fun working with Harvest Host too. We'll also go to Trail Lane because we love to ride our bikes and look at all the different um, trails that are around the U.S. So we will go to Trail Link and then copy and paste that into Trip Wizard 2 to add to um, our plans and what we want to do. So let's go around here. You know, as, and right here you can see you can open whatever uh, trip you want, you're working on, create a new trip. You can search here for something specific that's not showing up on the map. And you can show the entire trip just by clicking on this button without having to scroll. The drag route is really nice in case you want to customize your route. Like our friends Pat and Paul, they don't like going on interstates. And usually uh, uh, Trip Wizard will tell you the fastest efficient, which is usually interstate. Um, but for them, they can drag it onto what they call their scenic routes. Me, I call them windy and hilly, which are very scenic. But so the drag route is uh, pretty nice if you want to go down a more scenic route. And then you've got your filters. You can turn them on or off. And you can see we've got just two chosen, big rig and full hookup. But there's so many ways you can filter to find what you want. Also point of interest. And the map settings are nice. You can choose your style, whether it's street style or, or satellite. You can show your um, places of interest, enable filters. Uh, weather layer is pretty cool too. This is something they didn't have right away when we started out. So you can go turn on a radar 
and just see what's happening in the weather. As you can see right now, not much happening in, in uh, the U.S. as far as weather. But you can show wind speed. That would have been nice when we were in like Tucson and Texas this past spring. Wow, those winds are crazy. Even had a tornado like 12, uh, 12 miles from us. Um, the wildfires is really nice. When we were out in California for so long, um, we were pretty close to some of the wildfires. So we were really keeping an eye on that too. So this weather layer is really nice also in the map setting. Another thing being full-time and always on the move, there have been twice so far that we will cross over time zones and it's also daylight savings time. Talk about confusing. Anyways, I'm always looking if we're close to time zones, especially look at this, how many times uh, we're crossing over from central to eastern to central to eastern. So it's really nice to um, have that time zone too, so you keep that in mind. So here again, you can go to this uh, button and you can turn on where you can see all the campgrounds. Or if it's just too much and clutter, you just want to see what you have. Easy on, easy off. Points of interest too. You can turn on the points of interest or off, whether you know, you're looking for the rest stops. We'll zoom in. You see how that said zoom in to activate. Sometimes you're just too far away. It's not going to show you. So you can see all the rest stops when I, once I um, put on that place of interest. And then you've got your settings for your default settings, um, your account. You can change your profile. Also, this is nice. You need some help. You know, you can uh, contact them like I did, talk about a missing park. These videos are pretty good too. The um, product training videos are really great. Pat Buchanan has some awesome videos out there where he explains everything. Um, I learned a lot just from that. So if you're having trouble, go to the product training videos um, through the RV Life Trip Wizard on YouTube. Um, if you're new to this too, they do have a featured tour, so it'll take you around and show you how to use different things. That is handy. That's how we started out. Um, what's new is really nice too. So you can see they made some uh, updates on their ele elevation display. Oh, I got to show you that one yet. Um, they did some fixes. So you can see they are constantly updating, fixing, and um, maintaining this site. All right, coming around, this was our research tab. We went through all that, the amenities, the park types. You can see we've got two filters on and you can get rid of it easily by getting it out of your way. This tab down here is pretty awesome. I'm gonna move this over too. And it actually shows you the elevation that you'll be driving. And when we were out west, I looked at this a lot because if we had some crazy elevation changes, I kind of prepared myself for having anxiety. Well, or tried to relax myself. I'm not great with heights and stuff. Mark's an awesome drive, driver. Having a diesel pusher with the, um, the Jake brake is awesome. But you can see right here how all of a sudden it takes a climb. Let's go back up here. Look at the, the, the golden circle. And as I go along, each day from stop to stop, you can see where it is. So if I scroll over here, we can see right about here, right after Nashville, is where we start doing the climb. And it's right about here that we actually peak out. And then it's downhill. So it's nice to know when you're going to be doing some climbing and how much of a climb you're going to be doing. Another thing is it has this show, uh, show the gradient. This is nice. So you can see one, two, three, these are easy, piece of cake. Now right over here, it gets a little steeper, but even with that, it's only 6%. So it's not too bad. When we were on our caravan out on the west in the um, Grand Circle of the National Parks, there was one route that we took, it was Highway 12, scariest route I have ever been on. And we do have a video on that dedicated just to that route. The elevations were crazy. Um, anywhere from 4% to 10 to 14. I think 14 was the highest gradient we had. And uh, it was absolutely beautiful. But now that I've done it, I don't need to do it again. All right, so we'll hide the gradient. We'll hide the elevation. We'll bring this back out. And it brings us right back to our trip. 
like I said in the beginning, if you haven't tried Trip Wizard and uh, you're interested now, we will put a link below in the um, description paragraph so that you can go in and link through us and get your 25% discount, the best discount you're going to find on the internet for um, RV Life Trip Wizard. Totally worth it. And this is the only way we do our trips. Um, I don't know how you can be organized without it. Anybody that's planned out on trips will know it's a lot of work, but this makes it easy. It actually makes it kind of fun, too. So why don't you step into my office here for a second, Sue? I noticed when you were working on your segment for the RV Trip Wizard, you mentioned our Alaska trip. And I don't think Sue and I would like to say, oh, get this program and it's like falling off of a log using it. It takes a little bit uh, getting used to. I mean, that's one of the reasons why Sue made this video in the first place. But I'm here to tell you, once you start using this, you're like, you can't believe that anybody does it any other way. Now, we've got some good friends here who will remain unnamed here, but when they do their RV trip planning, they literally take a calendar, and then this, cal this is a photograph of their calendar, and they sent it to us because we're corresponding back and forth because we're going on a caravan where we have a, a wagon master. That's going to be Tim, and then we're going to have a tail gunner. That's going to be Paul. And you've met both of these couples on our channel. And the customer in the middle is Sue and Mark, mm. the Chan Man and Sue. And our, our wagon master is putting together with all sorts of little sheets of paper. He's writing where we're going to go, and we're communicating back and forth. Well, I, of course, want to put it on here. So I'm working with uh, RV Trip Wizard. And just look at where this plan is starting. We're going to be starting in Milwaukee, and we're going to be driving across. We're going to go to our friends and go to their farm, and then we're going to go over to Moderna. We're going to meet in Billings, and finally, we're going to throw all of our vegetables away and make sure we don't have any contraband, and we are going to hit every single one of these stops. But I'm here to tell you that if I had to do this on paper, I would just be really mixed up. Keep so I guess the only reason we wanted to show you this is that as your traveling gets more and more complex, you will get more and more confident, and you will become more and more dependent on this thing, uh, correcting errors that you're going to have, where you're going to have a certain number of days to get somewhere. And let's say none of these sites here are all that important, and you might even wing it and make reservations at the last minute. But let's say that one right there, you absolutely positively have to be there at that time because not only you paid that much for it, but let's say it's in a location that there is like nothing to pick from. So you've got to make that date. Well, Sue talked about locking a date there and then it will not let you make a mistake and you can uh, fool around with your schedule and slide things around in here. So this list here, once you start plugging things in your route, between looking at your route and this Excel spreadsheet doing the calculations, it will show you when you start making mistakes in your route. So uh, you can't beat it with a stick. I guess that's it, honey. You can go back to the good looking portion of this show and listen to Sue. <laughs> See ya, I gotta get back to work. So this is how we do our trip planning and there's so many ways to do it out there. If you have any little tricks, and I, I did find a few tricks uh, recently, like with uh, Google, trying to figure out the distance of the, the sites that you think you might wanna park in, um, because somebody actually shared that with us. So if you have any of your little tips and tricks that you wanna share as far as trip planning or even if you have some awesome places that you think we should go, please leave comments below. We love hearing from you guys. And until next time, safe travels and hopefully we'll see you on the road.